Okay, uh, welcome back to my new uh, Python tutorial. Um, now this is the first video after the installation has taken place. So there are a few things which I would like to mention uh, that I did not uh, explicitly say last time. And one of this is uh, how to add comments. Uh, so as I said last time, you can also add comments if you want to give your code to someone else and he should understand what you have done. So um, in order to do that, you could um, either use this number sign. Yeah, this is also called hash sign, I think. And then you can type in whatever you want behind that. Uh, and if you uh, run then your code, uh, you see that you are not getting any error message. It's not showing anything, but you also don't receive any error message, which means that everything behind that is completely ignored by Python. Um, this is only possible for single line comments. If you want to extend your comment and really light, write a long one uh, above some, some very important part of your code, you can uh, use with uh, three single quotations. Yeah, It's absolutely not recommended to do it like this. Yeah? Python, uh, it's, it's not Python standard, I think, and many people dislike that, especially Python experts, but it is possible. Yeah? Uh, so now we can uh, change our comment and even go here into a second line, a third line and so on. And if we run that again, we don't receive any error message. But as I said, it's not recommended. One should always keep in Python. Uh, the, the code in Python which you write should be self-explainable. Yeah? And uh, it's, it's very important not to insert too many comments. It will maybe even lead to the opposite effect, effect and people are more confused. Yeah? Okay, so uh, now we can delete this. And in this video, I want to go into details regarding variables because I think this is very important to know all the different variable types that are in Python existing and uh, to get a feeling for that because in future we will need them more often. And for that purpose, I created, as you see here, a new Python file, which I call variables.py. And this we will use now in order to write some small code. Yeah, and uh, as last time also, we start with integers because this is the easiest one. So there are actually four types available, which you use quite frequently, I think. This, these are integers. Yeah? These are doubles, strings, and booleans. If you know these four, then I think you have everything what you know in order to write your program. So we will start with a variable a, let's call them just a, and we write here a equal five. And when we write then here print a, as we have done that last time, and we run the program, you see now in the output, we have a five, which means that uh, uh, Python automatically identifies this as an integer variable and gives out this integer. However, one thing which is important to know, you are not allowed to put any indent in front of your variable, uh, uh, not, not, a, um, not a space and also not a tab. Because otherwise, as if we do that and we run the program, you will see you get an error message, unexpected indent. Uh, this is only allowed in special cases, and this we will come or this we will discuss a little bit later. But for the time being, you can keep in mind: never make any um, space or tab in front of your code lines without any reason. And uh, here you can make as many spaces uh, as you want. So you could even write it like this. And if you now run your code, as you see here, it doesn't change the output. It's still a equals five. Okay, so now we change this a little bit and make a dot behind that, a point. And um, if we now run our program, you can see now the output changes from five to 5.0. And the reason for that is that Python automatically identifies this as a float and changes then this integer variable to a float. And this is the standard output is then the float number point uh, zero. Yeah? Uh, if you write 5.1, of course, it would be the same. Okay, this is, uh, this is very important to know. Then as I said, the, there are also Booleans available. So we could also write a equal true. And if we now run the program and give out the output, it shows true. And uh, the same we could also do, of course, for false. Yeah? Uh, these are not strings. This is very important. It's really the Boolean uh, value of this variable is printed out. Yeah? So if we type in any other thing, as you see, it will give an error message. Yeah? So only true and false will work for that. And this brings me to, to the last type of variable, and these are strings. So as I said last time, you can use double quotation or single quotation for strings. Yeah? 
Um, so let's suppose I could write uh, hello world in such a way. And if you compile that and give out this variable, it shows hello world. Or you could write, as I said, a single quotation. And again, the output is hello world. I always uh, like single quotation because of a specific reason. If you use now double quotation here and you run this program, uh, as I said, it runs. But if you also want to use double quotation inside your quotation like that, then it would lead to an error message. Now, this is obvious because you you go out of your string now uh, and uh, then there is a, a yeah, undefined uh, word. And then again, you go back into your string. This does not work. So if you use here single quotation around that, then you can see you can use easily double quotations inside single quotations and it shows now here hello and then world in double quotation. Um, if you use double quotation here and here, then you have to make sure that you escape from that here. Otherwise, uh, it will not recognize these double quotations. And then you can write it, for example, in such a way and you run the program and then it's shown hello world and again the same output as before. But especially when you work with databases and you are working with um, double quotations in these different rows, for example, it always is a very huge source of errors that you have. So it's better to take care of that and use single quotations as much as possible. Okay, uh, so now we, we know most of the variables that are available in Python. And uh, now I would like to, to explain one thing uh, which is called casting. Yeah. So um, you have now, as I said, you can write, for example, uh, a equals five. And when you print that, you get a five. If you want to make a double from that, for example, you could either make a dot behind that yeah, or you could use float. Yeah. When you write float and then in parentheses five and you print that out, it converts this integer here or it casts this integer to a double. Um, and the same way would also work in the other way around. So you could write here, for example, int five point and then any arbitrary number behind that. And when you give this out, you will get a five. Yeah? Just because the, the float number here is converted to an integer. And this means in Python that just every value behind the dot is ignored and you only receive the first value, which is in this case a five. Yeah? This is a... Uh, yeah, in principle, floor, you can say. So it's uh, just one possibility how to convert a float number to int. Yeah, but uh, this is very important also to know. And the the last thing is str, yeah, which, which I think is important. Um, there you can convert uh, any number or what, what other data type you have into a string. Yeah? When you now run this, you still get a five, but you have to keep in mind that this is not an integer anymore. It's a string. Yeah. So if I write, for example, uh, b equals five, and then I define a new variable c equal a plus b, and I give out here c, which is the sum of a and b, then you will see that you will receive an error message here. Yeah? Because the error says that it can only add a string to a string or an integer to an integer, but not in this case, uh, a mixture of this. So this is also very important when you add two variables uh, or if you do any kind of operation with two variables, you have to make sure that they are from the same type. So uh, we can easily solve this in two ways. Either we remove here uh, this string, then we have two integers. And if we print this, we have 10 again. Or we write it in such a way, str5, and str5. And now when we add these two variables, you can, I think, guess already what comes out. And this is not 10, of course, but 55 or 55, just because we have here one string and another string. And these strings are added. So it means the second string is just appended to the first one. And this gives them the value 55. Yeah. Uh, the other way, of course, instead of writing str, we can also write it in such a way. This has exactly the same meaning. In both cases, you define strings with that. But str you can use to convert, for example, any other variable into a string. Yeah, and of course, what is not possible, not all uh, operations are defined for strings. So a plus b is possible. If you would multiply b and a, then uh, this, this operation is not defined and you will get an error message. 
Yeah, and the last thing which I want to explain here is, uh, is of course, what I said before, Boolean uh, variable. So if you write, for example, A equals, and then again, you use this casting bool, uh, for example, zero, uh, then you can already expect that this leads to, uh, sorry, you have to write A. So if you compile that, this leads to a false just because the zero is interpreted as a Boolean false. If you write a one, yeah, of course it is true as you might uh, expect. And if you type in any number larger than one, then it's also set as true. Yeah, this is also important to keep in mind. If you are unsure about what kind of variable you are dealing with, because maybe you get the code from someone else and you want to modify that, it's very simple to get out the type of the variable. Yeah? Um, so if you, for example, write a equal five, yeah? and you then write here print type of a, and you compile that, then you see class int. Yeah? If you write five point and type of a, and you compile that, it's a float. So now this, with the help of this command type, you can actually print out the data type of this um, yeah of this variable and then later you know in which way you have to modify it in order to use it maybe for some further processing and now we have seen already several times how we can define one single variable but it's also possible in python to directly define several var variables at the same time yeah so for example we could write here a comma e comma c equals one two three this is very short for writing a equal b, b equal two, uh, a equal one, b equal two, c equal three, and so on. So if we now print a comma b comma c, for example, then uh, you see here that uh, we get all these variables printed out a, b, c. Um, yeah, so this worked very well. The the number one is assigned to a, number two is assigned to b, and so on. The other possibility is that you have maybe one single value and you want to assign this directly to three different variables. So uh, when you write here a equals b equals c equals one, for example, and we print out the values a, b, c, we get three times one, of course, because this number one is assigned now to all three variables. Okay, and one other thing which I want to explain is related to copying of variables. So if I write, for example, here a equal one uh, and b equal a, and I give that out, uh, sorry, like this, then of course you can see immediately it is one. And if I then later change the value of a uh, uh, to, let's suppose, five, uh, and I run this program, it still shows one. Uh, so after changing the value of one, the value of B is not changed, which means that we are not referencing this variable A, but we are copying this variable. Uh, for referencing, one has to do some other methods, which I will explain a little bit later in the tutorial series. But for the time being, you can keep in mind that if once you assign a variable to another one, you copy the content of this variable and whatever you do with the original variable later, it does not affect your previous variable. And now coming to the last thing which I want to show in this tutorial, and this is uh, related to naming variables. Yeah. So if you want to give your code to someone else, it's very important that it's readable. Yeah. Um, and I think there are two common possibilities uh, how to do uh, how to name uh, variables. Yeah? One is called, and then we can write here as a comment uh, called snake case. In this case, um, we call that uh, one single variable oops sorry equals one for example yeah so in this case uh, the name of our variable if it contains more than one word then we combine these three words with an underscore yeah so uh, it for my point this is my most favorite one actually i use this quite frequently when i'm programming but there are also people who like the other case and this is called camel case yeah, and in this case, it would look like this. So now the first letter or the first letter of the first word is a, a small letter. Yeah? And then you start the next word with a capital letter. Yeah? So one single variable equals one. Yeah? So both is possible, but I think the second one is less readable 
uh, you have to concentrate more to really understand the, um, the syntax. Whereas here, you can see very simple how the different three words are uh, attached to each other. Okay, uh, this is everything which I want to show today. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and uh, you, you learned something new. Um, and I hope it was not too boring. If you have any comments and suggestions how to improve my further tutorials, please put it into the comment section. Uh, in the next tutorial, I will then continue with lists because I think these are also very important to, to understand in Python before then we will go later uh, further to, uh, to loops, to if conditions and so on. Yeah? And hopefully we will reach even up to a level of doing some data science with neural networks. But let's see where our tutorial will bring us. Um, yeah, then uh, first of all, thank you very much for your attention. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Please, hit, uh, please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And hopefully see you very soon for the next tutorial.